All right, folks. Today we're going to talk a little bit about this radio. It is an Iluns HS4. At least that's how it's branded. A couple of things I wanted to point out is that this radio might look familiar to you. It's because it is sold under a number of brands in the marketplace. It's actually manufactured and sold under the name of an Anytone 555. That's four fives. It might be the 555 V2. It might be the 555 Pro. It's really hard to keep track of the Anytone naming convention. But anyhow, this one is called the Islands HS4. Now, what's unique about that is I was contacted by a company called Retivus. Some folks say Retivus. And they asked if I would review this radio for them. And I like radios and I like doing reviews. So, of course, I said yes. So, they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you are the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Bring your electronics project to life with PCBWay.com. Enjoy premium PCB manufacturing and assembly services designed to fit your needs and budget. With fast turnaround times, reliable global shipping, and a commitment to quality, PCBWay.com is your partner from your first prototype to final production. Discover the value of working with the best. Check out PCBWay.com today. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I did want to say that uh, this is a 10-meter radio, meaning that it operates on the 10-meter amateur radio spectrum or band. Let me go ahead and turn this on. We can see some stuff. So when we turn it on, a couple of things I wanted to point out is, is that it has this band selection knob here, which is typical of CB-type radios. And you have bands A all the way up through F. In each one of these bands, you have a bank of channels. See how I turn this? In this case, we have 59, 60. Here we go. Now we're back to channel 1. So I have 60 channels across all of these various bands. In each one, so you can see this is channel 1 on band D, right? If I go to band C, it changes even though we're still on channel 1. And so that's a little bit of an interesting way to think about manipulating your VFO a lot of folks are not accustomed to this kind of thing here. So what I wanted to show you is some folks will say, well, that's not very good. How do I get on particular frequencies? So let's just say you're on 2800 and you want to, you go up to channel two and you see, all right, well, now I've made a jump to 20, 28005. I go one more and I'm on 28010. You say, well, I want to be on 28007. How do I get there? Well, you have this button here, this knob called a clarifier, and this clarifier will allow you to make certain adjustments. Um, you can hit this button here, and it will pick different. Um, it will it will pick different values that you can change here. Let me get back to where it was. All right, so now we're on 11, 12, 13. And there we go. We're at 28007. So I wanted to show you that because that's how you dial or tune this thing in. The next thing I wanted to show you is, is that this radio can be jailbroke or freedom banded or any of those other things that you want to call it, where it can operate beyond the 10 meter band. And today I'm going to show you how you can configure this radio so you can operate it on the 12 meter band, which happens to be another amateur radio band. So what I want to do is I want to turn this radio off and I want to press the function button and I want to press the emergency button at the same time. So that's a little bit of an act. Yeah, let's go ahead and turn this on. And you can see it came back and it says one band. And what we do now is we can turn this and now it says two bands. And what I want to do now is I want to press and hold this function button down and it's going to tell me it's resetting and then it's going to come to an end. And it takes a couple of seconds. Once that happens, I can turn this off. I could turn it back on. And now you can see that we are still in band A, channel one, and it's going from 28 megahertz to 25.615. Now you might say, well, how do I get these channels or these values programmed into the radio? It's something you can't really do from the front panel. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna connect this up to our computer. And we do that, we're going to take a look at some software that we can use to kind of modify or customize the interface of this thing a little bit. 
on the back of the radio, it has this data port, which is not for data for doing digital modes. It's data for com interfacing with your computer. And it's an older school USB type connector. This came with a programming cable. So let me get this plugged into the computer and we're gonna come back and look at the software. So I got my USB cable plugged in here and I did that with my radio turned off just cause I wanna be safe. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see what happens. And it just boots up normally. So what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and I wanna connect the software. And let me show you a link for that. There'll be a link to this in the description below, but this is the Retivus iLunx HS4 10 meter single sideband ham radio page. And so you can see right now it's running for about $199 and it looks like we have a big prime day promotion on October. So if I scroll down, you can see all kinds of great information and features and functions about this radio, but I'm looking for the software. So let's scroll down here. You can see this says frequency range 28 through 29.7 megahertz. So that's your 10 meter band right there. And what I'm looking for down here is firmware, software, firmware, software. So I can click here and I get the manuals or I can click here and get the firmware and software. So here's a Windows 11 driver installer. I did not need to use that because I'm using Windows 10 because I'm old school. And then here is an executable file that I download. And when I downloaded this, I clicked on it. I ran through the setup wizard. I hit yes for everything. And then now I have the software running on my computer. I also forgot, I wanted to share this with you. This is the US Amateur Radio Bands, and it is displayed on a document here from the American Radio Relay League, fine group of individuals. And if we take a look up here, 10 meters, 28 megahertz. And this just shows you that this band is from 28 megahertz all the way up to 29.7 megahertz. Now, what we're interested in is down here, the 12 meter band. And that says it's from 24.89 megahertz all the way up to 24.990 megahertz. Okay, quickly, what I did here is I opened up a window called device manager. You can just type that in the run bar at the bottom. And then I just go down to this section here called ports, common LPT. I can see a couple of different ports that I have connected to my computer. The one for this radio is the USB enhanced serial CH343 COM16. And I'm gonna to need to know this in order to use the software. Now what I wanna tell you is COM16 is unique to my computer. It might not be to yours. So it's a good idea for you to go in device manager and understand which COM port you're looking at. Okay, so here's our software and we're running this. And a couple of things I wanted to point out. One is if you look up here in this top corner, it says AT5555, and that is the AnyTone model that we spoke about a little bit earlier. Over here in the center, you can see that it is showing 28 megahertz through 29.7, and that's what we expect out of the box. But because we made our configuration change, we want to come over here and we want to drop this down to our 24.715 and all the way up to 30.105. And you can look here and you can see that this data table is empty. So a couple of things we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to setup and I'm gonna click on communication port and then I'm gonna set my port to COM16. I'm gonna hit okay. Once I do that, I'm gonna come over to program and I'm gonna hit read from radio. I'm gonna get this pop-up message here and I'm gonna say okay. And so what it's doing right now is it's reading data from the radio. When it does this, I get a PC display on the actual radio and I'll roll a picture of that in right now for you. And what it's telling us now is our read data complete. And so you can see all of the different channel configurations that we have on the radio. And I can go over here and I can switch bands and I can see different ones. There's also some other configuration changes that we can make over here under options and features. I'm not gonna go through that in this particular video. Perhaps I will do a more in-depth video on this radio, but today I just wanted to show how to adjust your frequency selection and manipulate that for your radio. So if I come over here and I take a look at this, I can type something in. This would be my receiving frequency and this would be my transmission frequency. And that's really handy if we're gonna be doing anything like repeater work that has offsets on our 10 meter band. So let's say I wanna start programming this in for the 12 meter band. So I could say 24.940 is a frequency in the 12 meter band. And I just set that as my receive frequency. And I'm actually gonna see if I can cut copy that and I can't. 
So that kind of sucks. So I go over here and go 24 dot 940. So that way I would transmit and receive on that particular frequency. I'm not going to mess with the high cut and the echo and all that. Oh, echo is enabled. Awesome. Um, I can come over here and I can make other various adjustments if I want. Like here is CTS, CTCSS and DCS. That would be something I would use for repeaters on 10 meters. Um, here I do have it added to my scan bank. But I'm just going to leave that alone. So we made that change. And what I want to do is I want to write this back to the radio, reboot the radio and test and see if it actually works. Um, I can do the same procedure through all of these different bands and make any modifications or adjustments as necessary. All right, I can write back over to here where it says write to radio or I can go program write to radio. So let's go ahead and write this back to the radio. And you can see that's happening now. Okay, here's the radio and the moment of truth. Let's turn this baby on. And there you go, 24940, which is the channel that we wrote to A, uh, Bank A or Band A, Channel 1. And again, if I wanted to change this, I can use my clarifier and I can push the clarifier to adjust different digits in the scale. There you go. And then I can use my radio and be happy. That's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.